and hello again thanks for joining us for the walking dead snack bites um so i wanted to talk about tara maggie jesus and hilltop and you know what i find most interesting is that while i agree that most of the saviors should die no question especially that long hair dude i really hate him oh, god I hate him. I, I wanted him to die all the oh. way back last season when i saw him um but the thing is that I find most interesting about Tara, while it's true, she did lose her girlfriend to a savior. The very savior that they're actually working with. That they're working with. Oh, like, yeah, Dwight. Hmm. Let that sink in, number one. Number two, how did we meet Tara? She was on the wrong side of the line and didn't know it, working with the governor. governor. And Glenn took, you know, he decided to help her. And they decided to help each other. And that's how Tara even got into the group in the first place. So the fact that she's just like, no, they all gotta die. Gotta kill them all. It's just interesting to me that she doesn't have a little bit of a broader perspective. Considering that the one savior who she really wants dead, Negan aside, would be Dwight. And the fact that her own history of meeting Rick's group was because of being on the wrong side of the line. So... I mean, it is possible that there are some people who are just trying to survive and who aren't necessarily bad people, but that was the current, like, power source is Negan and the Saviors. So just because you're a Savior doesn't necessarily mean you're an evil, bad person who's done horrible things. I mean, it's probable. It doesn't mean that it's definite, is the point I was going with. Um... So... I thought it was funny that, like, she was taunting the saviors that were all uh, tied up by, like, pretending that she was going to, like, shoot them. Like, she's just, like, messing with them. Yeah. Um, and then she said, the way she said, like, oh, we'll mm. bring them to Maggie and Maggie will know what to do with them. Like, as if, like, she said it really ominously. Like, as if, like, Maggie's going to line them up and execute them or something like that. And then... Maggie actually didn't do that at the hey, end. Hey. Yeah, it was like totally different. I'm pregnant than... with uh, you know my husband who's dead now because of Negan, but y'all can come stay back here. Yeah, so I I thought that was really interesting. Um, you know, the only thing about the saviors is, uh, and this is just like the way that I see it. I don't know. I I would not let any of the savior saviors live. And what I mean by that are like the, the ones who are like, I am Negan. And I'm talking about the ones that are not like the workers, not the ones who have to work for points. And the reason why that is, is, well, it's for a couple of reasons. First of all, you have to consider what type of a person like one of them is. Um, in order to become a savior, you have to first say like, I am Negan. Well, and then you have, I know, but, but then you have to like actively help him carry out missions like the one where they lined everybody up and then bashed Glenn and Abraham's head in. They have to actively take a part in all of that. Remember they were like all behind them guarding the well, whole what? thing. Hold on, hold on. Let me just finish what I'm saying. So like, so they're, they're not just, they're, they're not passive in it. They are actively participating and then they're taking pictures of it afterwards not which is everyone. like i know but a lot of them are which is sick okay so that's like another thing so they're they're not great dudes already and then on top of that i don't see how you could possibly trust any of them because let's say that one of them is like seems let's just say that there's one that's you know a really good salesperson and convinces rick or whoever that they are trustworthy to me I would not necessarily believe them. And the reason why is because like, even if they are willing to change, you've killed other saviors, which are likely their friends. So they're like always going to have a thing against you, like no matter what, which me which means that you really can't ever trust them. Not, not, so, not necessarily. I, like when you think about like, uh, those saviors that Maggie and Carol came across, uh, particularly the women, you know, who, I mean, that was just this, you know, the person who's in power and they fell in line to, you know, what, what the state of law is, so to speak. Um, and you know, when, when Maggie was talking to the one girl who had her pinky cut off and who like lost her own baby and stuff. And mm -hmm. I mean, I could see someone like her being like, okay, this is the new world order. Fine whatever i just want to survive and if you guys are going to help me survive 
Like, I don't think it's necessary an allegiance to Negan. That's not to say that there aren't those who are, you know, given allegiance to Negan. Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't think that's everyone. I don't think, I mean, some people, like, if you were in the world alone, like Morales, although we won't really talk about him right now. Yeah, but we'll talk about him later. If talk you're, about him if later. If you're, if you're alone and you stumble across a Negan or a governor and they give you shelter and they give you food, yeah. they give you... Here, this is your job. This is your position. You're basically my security. Mm-hmm. Are you really going to say no? Like, Oh, no. Oh, there's got to be a better, yeah. more noble group out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, that, You're going to go with it. That makes sense. I, I get that. But that being said, you don't have to be a shit stain human being at the same time. And some of the saviors, if not most of them, definitely are shit stain human beings. I won't, I won't disagree there. Yeah, I mean, like Simon, for example. Like, that dude's got to die. I mean, I, I just don't see how you could possibly ever trust him. I, I well, mean, no, you, you couldn't trust Simon, no. That'd it, be... it doesn't matter what he says. I'd just be like, nope, I don't believe you. Bam. Like, I you just can't. All, I would say all the lieutenants, uh, I'm giving I'm giving elbow room for Eugene. Cause he I hasn't, knew you were going to say that. Well, he hasn't done anything, like, horrible. He hasn't hurt anybody. Yeah. I, yep. He's just there I know. doing, you know, making more efficient walkers and doing little science projects, basically. He hasn't done anything to actually hurt any group of people. Agreed. He hasn't done anything to go actively against Rick or Hilltop or or uh, the kingdom or anything. He's just playing video games and, like, making sure the fences are secure. And, and, Big deal. And snuggling with his Grumbly Gook. And, and snuggling with his little stuffed toy. But, like, he hasn't It's done... called a Grumbly Gook. Okay. He hasn't murdered anyone. He hasn't hurt anyone. He hasn't made any bombs or anything. No. Or any, you know, poisons to kill people. Correct. I agree with that. So, Eugene would be exempt. Todd should have been exempt. Oh, Darryl... dude, yeah. Well, that's what I'm saying. Well, we'll is... talk about that later. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, okay. We'll talk about the saviors and which ones, you know, deserve below. That's it for this night. Bye right now. If you guys like what we have to say, um, go ahead and subscribe. Subscribe Subscribe to our channel. We're going to be doing uh, videos like this almost every day now. So Yes, and uh, other things too. And other things too. So we will talk to you uh, in the next episode. Thanks for watching. Bye.